thank you for this in Jesus name we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor amen and amen glory to God we shall read today from Psalms 91 Psalms 91 in its entirety the word of the Lord reads as thus he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And 10,000 at thy right. Right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading Every time she turns, it
this morning in the 38th chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 38, beginning at verse number one. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say unto Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. All hands raised before the Lord. the sentence of death and grant unto these thy children extended life life and that more abundantly quicken thy son may the spirit of God give us revelation direction and illumination from thy word and I speak the word of life. Obey everyone under the sound of my voice in this sacred place and watching on the world wide web. May the power of God overshadow your spirit, your mind, and your body. Give us just what we need from the Lord. In Jesus' name, every heart say amen. Turn to the wall and praise him. Turn to the wall and praise him. Turn to the wall and praise him. The Bible instructs us that Hezekiah one of the kings of Judah was the son of a wicked king and father, Ahaz. To this truth, I would submit to you this morning that we cannot control who our parents are. We cannot control what type of environment we are born into. Everyone was not born into a Christian household. Everyone was not born into a home that believed in sanctification and godliness. If you had that privilege, you're a blessed person. But if you were not born into that type of family or born into a godly atmosphere, it does not mean that you are not blessed. Your past does not have to determine your future. And the word of the Lord said in 2 Kings chapter 17 and verse number 2 that Hezekiah's father Ahaz did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. 
The Bible said in verse 10 that he set up images and groves in every high hill. He set up idols under every green tree. Everywhere you looked throughout the land was some type of symbol that disavowed the reality of the true and the living God, Jehovah. The word of the Lord said they burnt incense in all the high places. They copied the pattern of the heathen nations that God had instructed to drive out of the land that God promised them. The word of the Lord said that they wrought wicked things in the sight of God and provoked God to anger. Verse 12 said they served idols whereof the Lord said unto them, ye shall not do this thing. He said to Moses unto the people, thou shalt have gods before me. Hezekiah grew up never seeing true worship never hearing his parents pray to the true and the living God. He grew up as a boy, never hearing the songs of Zion, was never in a Sunday school class, never in a vacation Bible school. But before there was the Torah, before there was the Ten Commandments, before there was the writing of the apostles or the prophets, there was the law of conscience. God has placed something in the spirit of every human being that helps us distinguish right from wrong. Without the aid of a preacher, without the aid of a church, even without the aid of a Bible, God has placed something in the spirit of man that lets him know the path you're heading down leads to destruction. The Bible said in Romans chapter number two and verse 14, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Romans 2 and 15, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. Friend, I don't care what the college professor says down at YSU. Something in your spirit lets you know there is a God somewhere. I don't care how many times they say that we have evolved from primates. Something in your spirit without knowing all of the inner workings of the creative processes of God lets you know when you look in a mirror, I am created in the image and the likeness of God. No matter how individuals attempt to dehumanize one another, make one group of people lower in value than another, something in your spirit lets you know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse number 3, the Bible said that when Hezekiah came to power, when he came to the throne at the age of 29 years old, in 2 Kings 18 and 3, the Bible said he did not repeat the failures of his father. He did not continue in the godless ways of King Ahaz. The Bible said he did that 
which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David did. He removed the high places. He break down the images. He cut down the groves. He break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made in one season in which the people of God looked to that serpent for healing in their body. And the Bible said he caused the children of Israel to burn that brazen serpent and called it Nuhushtetan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. And the Bible said his character was of such a nature that there was no king like him before him or after him. And the Bible said that the Lord was with him and he prospered whithersoever he went and he rebelled against the king of Assyria. His father had attempted to make an alliance with this wicked king. But the word of the Lord said, No man can serve two masters. He will love one or hate the other. You can't be on God's side Monday through Wednesday and then be on God's side Thursday through Sunday. It doesn't work that way. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A choice must be made. Who is on the Lord's side? And I would send an admonition to every ear under the sound of the voice of God this morning that you would make a decision to come on the winning side. When you're on the Lord's side, you are on the side of victory. When you are on the Lord's side, you are on the side of righteousness. When you are on the Lord's side, you are on the side of justice and holiness. When you are on the Lord's side, you are on the side of integrity and character. When you come to God, it is a win-win situation. For it is Christ that always causes us to triumph. The word of the Lord said, thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ all over the parking lot. Help me give God a victory praise right now. God was with him and I want you to know today that God is with you and the scripture said that God prospered him greatly God gave him supernatural victories over all of his adversaries and enemies even releasing the angel of the Lord to kill 100 and 85,000 Assyrians in one night. They never had to lift the sword. God himself vested himself in his garments of war and said, I am going to fight and win this battle on your behalf. And that's why I come out this morning to say to the church that God told me to tell the saints that I am going to fight their battle. All that I need them to do is hold their peace and hold on to their faith because my response to the saints on this morning shall be the same as my response to Hezekiah when he went into the temple and laid out the letter from the king of Assyria out before the Lord and God said to Hezekiah you can go on back to your living quarters because this battle 
is not yours. It is the Lord's. So the Bible indicates that Hezekiah was clearly a man whom God had his eyes on. He was a man that God loved. He was a man that God highly favored. He seemed to be an unlikely candidate for a death sentence. He seemed like the kind of person that God would shield, that God would preserve from life's maladies and life's tragedies. And some of you came to the service this morning saying, Lord, I do not understand why this calamity has come upon me. I do not understand why this sickness has come upon my body. I do not understand why this trouble has come to my household. Well, it is my responsibility to remind you according to the scripture that many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord him out of them all. Well, uh, any day uh, that you can make it uh, to the house of God uh, is a great day uh, to give God praise. But I come by this morning to tell you uh, that this is not an ordinary Sunday morning. Uh, this is not just another Sunday morning. Uh, I said, Lord, what kind uh, of day is this? said, son, I want you to tell the people that on this morning, I am giving 15 a year extensions. I said, well, Lord, that's good news. That's good news for somebody that feels like they're at the end of their strength and at the end of their rope end of their hope. My assignment from the Lord is to tell you this morning, it's not over. Just because God is blessing you, that means he's not going to test you. At some point in your life, your faith is going to be tested beyond the acceptance of people. Your faith has got to be tested the acquisition of a new car or a new house. Your faith has to be tested. Beyond he put money in my pocket and clothes on my back. At some point in your life, your faith has to become a matter of life and death. And that's where some of us are on this morning. A matter of life or death. If God doesn't step in, if God doesn't intervene, if God don't stretch out his hand, if God doesn't make a way, if God doesn't release his power, there's no hope for me. But I came out today with good news from the Lord.
not a Bible kind of prophet, a biblical prophet, not only prophesies the acquisition of material things, but a Bible prophet opens his mouth and say you got to turn from your wickedness. Yeah. 
that Hezekiah wept so. And I know they sing that grown men don't cry. But you better learn the power of tears. He turned his face to the wall. And I don't care what they say. There's a blessing in the living right. There are benefits in the holiness. Bible says in Psalm 34 that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry, the righteous cry, and the Lord hears him.
and do like Hezekiah. He said, I'm going to stop all this whining and murmuring and complaining and fault finding and finger pointing. And I'm going to make my appeal to the God with whom all things are possible. See, we believe in miracles. We believe that a doctor can help you, but only God can heal you. Eve, in the power and the authority of the word of God. For without faith, he shall no time. Without faith, it is impossible, I bless you. It is impossible to please God. And see, at some point, when you truly have faith in God, your faith turns to action. And that action is demonstrated in how you worship God. Not just in good times, but especially in the bad times. My assignment from the Lord this morning was to tell you it's not over. It's not over. God is giving 15-year extensions. 15-year extensions with no interest added. Turn to the wall. You are, you are here breaking every chain. We worship you. We worship you. Nothing, friend, if you're watching this webcast today and you are facing an impossible situation. We serve a God of impossible possibilities. I want you to pick up that phone now and call us at area 4330-747-4445. Sing it for me, Chris. Glory. <laughs> you are here. I want God to 
break this sex addiction. I want God to get me off of this alcohol. I'm drinking too much. I want to be delivered. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. And if you're not afraid, if you're not ashamed, just come and stand in a line across the front here with social distancing. We want to pray for you. We want to believe God for your turnaround. God wants to save you. He wants to fill you with his power.
Jesus Christ. It is with thanksgiving that we come before this the throne of grace. Thanking you, Father, for the privilege and the opportunity that you have given to us by extending the course of our lives. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that you have not allowed the death angel to prevail over us, but you have extended grace and mercy. You have shown your passion through your love unto we, Lord God, an unworthy people. Thank you, God, for the mercies of God that are prevailing on our lives today. Thank you. Father, we bless you right now. We declare our adoration unto thee. We declare Jesus, we join with David who declare we will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise shall continually be in our mouth. Now, God, let your precious blood prevail. Let it wash, Lord. Let it cleanse. Let it sanctify. Let it purge. Let it purify that we may walk the vocation for which we are called. Use now this people, Father, to show forth your glory and your praise. We promise, Lord, to give you all that you're worthy of. We promise, God, to give you the praise, to give you the worship as we put our
say with me, I want you to say out loud, praise team, help me, say Father's Friday. Father's Friday. One more time, everybody, say Father's Friday. Father's Friday. Well, next weekend, the forecast calls for rain on Saturday and Sunday. So what we're going to do is celebrate our Father's Day worship celebration on this coming Friday night okay. at 7 p.m. We're calling it Father's Friday Family Worship Celebration. It's going to be a lot of great gospel music. I'll have a word from the Lord for you. So next Sunday, we'll be worshiping online only because the weather will be prohibitive. But this coming Friday night, 7 o'clock, Father's Friday. Everybody that's going to try to be here, let me hear your heart on.
They need you to come and help us get the chairs back.